On Ethernet networks, each host has a unique MAC address for identification purposes. Devices with multiple NICs require multiple MAC addresses, one MAC address per NIC. So how do you talk to a group of hosts and ensure that all hosts don't receive all the traffic? Here's where we have broadcast and multicast communication. Multicast involves sending to a group of receivers in a single stream, whereas broadcast involves sending to all receivers. Multicast is similar to broadcast in the sense that it sends to a group of machines. However, multicast sends to some MAC addresses, while broadcast sends to all MAC addresses. All hosts receive broadcast traffic whether they like it or not. When a host sends a packet to a broadcast MAC address, it is delivered to all stations on the wire. A broadcast received by a host requires processing, so it's a good idea to keep broadcast to a minimum on your network. Ethernet uses low order bit of the high order octet to distinguish conventional unicast addresses from multicast broadcast addresses. Unicast has a bit set to zero, while multicast has the bit set to 1. Workstations pay attention to their MAC address, broadcast and multicast. This is why multicast and broadcast have their lower order bit set to 1 and this is the first bit on the wire. If it was set to 1, it will listen to that frame. Hosts participate in multicast traffic using Internet Group Management Protocol IGMP. IGMP is a communication protocol used to establish multicast group membership. Essentially, machines need to be configured with a specific multicast group to receive multicast traffic. As the traffic rate increased, layer 2 switches replaced hubs. They are the opposite to how hubs work and don't pass traffic across all ports. They use what is known as dynamic MAC learning. Dynamic MAC learning gives a layer 2 switch more intelligence by mapping MAC addresses to local ports. Switches maintain a MAC address table that maps individual MAC addresses to physical ports. Once the MAC addresses are mapped to ports, the switch does not need to flood traffic to all ports as now it knows exactly which port to send traffic to. This is how data packets are forwarded on layer 2 networks based on MAC addresses. This enables switches to direct traffic instead of broadcasting to everyone on every port apart from the receive port. However, when a switch doesn't know what to do with the frame, it will still flood the unknown unicast frame. Flooding means it gets sound all of the ports in the same receive VLAN. This behavior is undesirable and causes a lot of scalability concerns. An unknown unicast frame has an unknown destination MAC address. An ARP request is an example of an unknown unicast frame as it sends to the broadcast MAC address. Layer 2 networks exhibit a lot of flooding and dynamic MAC learning that hinders the overall network scalability and efficiency. Layer 3 networks don't do any flooding, as a result, are a lot more stable. If they don't know of a destination, they simply drop it, they don't flood it. There is a limit to the number of MAC entries a switch can hold, impacting the number of total VM or host supported on the switched infrastructure. Once this limit is reached, the switch falls back to broadcast mode and broadcast traffic to all ports in the respective VLAN. Essentially, it brings us back 20 years ago to the world of hubs. Within layer 2 base fabrics, devices will see all MAC addresses in either the core or edge switches, and sometimes on both. This hits scalability limits due to the limits on MAC entry numbers, which could be around 128,000 MAC. As a result, designing a large public cloud environment based on these numbers is not an optimal solution that would scale to many tenants. To complicate matters further, promiscuous mode configured on your servers turns the network into one large broadcast domain, regardless of whether you have split your host per VLAN in an RFC-defined way. Promiscuous mode NICs see all traffic traversing for processing, as opposed to only processing traffic it's intended to receive. This method is usually used to intercept traffic for packet sniffing. 